Welcome back to our series on the cell-based model of hemostasis. This is part two of four, where we will discuss initiation and amplification, and connect these steps with the antiplatelet agents we use for the treatment of acute coronary syndromes. We begin where we left off in part one. The endothelium has been damaged by the rupture of an atherosclerotic plaque. Tissue factor has been exposed and platelets have been recruited to the area. The first step of the cell-based model of initiation, factor 7, is converted to factor 7A by the exposed tissue factor. 7A then converts factor 10 to factor 10A. Factor 10A then adjoins with activated 5A that has been released and activated by the recruited platelets to the area. This forms a small amount of an enzyme complex known as prothrombinase because it converts the enzyme prothrombin to the critical factor um, in the entire cell base model, thrombin. The generation of the small amount of thrombin is the end of initiation. The second step of the cell base model is amplification. In amplification, thrombin activates the machinery for the production of exponential quantities of thrombin. First, thrombin activates the platelet um, from a smooth spherical platelet um, by binding to the 1B receptor expressed on the surface of the platelet. When thrombin binds to 1B, it changes the platelet into a sticky activated platelet that expresses on its surface the receptor 2B, 3A. And of course there's multiple of these receptors. Now this is an activated platelet. Additionally, thrombin acts on the surface of the platelet to activate factor 11 to factor 11A, activates factor 8 that's bound to von Willebrand's factor um, on the platelet to factor 8A, stabilized on the surface of the platelet. And then finally, thrombin not only activates factor 11, factor 8, but it activates larger quantities of factor 5A on the surface of the platelet. The activation of all of this coagulation machinery on the surface of the platelet marks the end of the amplification step. Now, hopefully, it's obvious why platelets play such a critical role in the pathophysiology of acute coronary syndromes. While thrombin is the most critical platelet activator, there are several other methods to activate platelets that we must mention. Thromboxane A2 is a cell signal mediator that activates platelets. Thromboxane A2 is produced by the enzyme cyclooxygenase and administering aspirin a cornerstone therapy of acute coronary syndrome inhibits the production of cyclooxygenase, thus inhibits platelet activation by inhibiting the production of thromboxane A2. Additionally, on the surface of a platelet is something called an ADP receptor. This receptor can be inhibited via several drugs, the first of which is clopidogrel, ticlopidine, Prasigrel, and finally Ticagalore. All act in some fashion on the, the P2Y12 component of the ADP receptor. Ultimately, inhibiting platelet activation inhibits the expression of the 2B3A inhibitor, of, excuse me, of the 2B3A receptor. The 2B3A receptor is important because it is involved in the terminal step of platelet aggregation, which occurs when a molecule of fibrinogen, or factor 1, 
binds with another 2B3A receptor on another activated platelet, forming a sticky mesh that begins to cover over the exposed endothelium and begin the repair process. However, administering a 2B3A receptor antagonist binds directly to the 2B3A receptor. And these agents are abciximab, integralin, integralin or eftafibatide, and tyrafibin. Despite all of these effective antiplatelet agents, the next step of the coagulation process, propagation, still occurs. And in the next video, we will discuss propagation as well as the direct thrombin inhibitors. Hope you'll join us. Thanks.